Herbicide resistant weeds are increasing in population in the United States and in every major crop growing country around the world. It's a horrible problem, Brian. Yeah, it is a terrible problem, but you know what, Darren? I always like to be number one, and I hear that the United States is now almost number one in terms of resistant weeds. Well, we're finally going to overtake <laughs> Australia. I know in some sports uh, we're having a tough time overtaking them, but not in herbicide resistant weeds. We're going to be the biggest. We're going to have the most acres. It is kind of sad, actually, that we're in this position, but we're getting more acres that are being farmed the same way with glyphosate, 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 no other chemicals, and we're getting some resistant weeds there just like we had not that many years ago with the ALS family of chemistry. We're using Pursuit in the soybeans. We're using Glean in the wheat and other herbicides in that family, and now they're not as effective on weeds. In fact, they're completely ineffective on many weeds. Glyphosate's becoming the same thing. Well, when it comes to resistant weeds, there are a lot of different herbicides that now we have resistant weed problems with. Darren mentioned ALS and glyphosate, but there's also atrazine, some of the HPPD products. There are a whole bunch of them now. And what it really comes down to is this. When you went out there and you sprayed glyphosate for the first time, you could use even a low rate and it seemed like it killed everything. But eventually, what happened is there were a few weeds that just didn't die from that glyphosate rate. So you increased the rate. Well, then you killed almost everything again, and maybe there were just one or two that didn't quite die that time. So you increased the rate even more. Pretty soon, these weeds at low rates of glyphosate had a chance to build up internal resistance. And you also have to remember, when it comes to weed populations, it's just like human beings, okay? We are all considered human beings, but is any individual the exact same as the next one? No. We end up with that same deal in weeds where we've got, let's say, water hemp, but we have a whole bunch of individual plants, and some of them are gonna be more tolerant to certain herbicides as compared to others. So this is a big thing. It really builds as time goes on, and you also select out for the toughest individual plants of a certain species to control. The way I look at it is that nature is always going to conquer whatever we're doing. If we're screwing something up, eventually nature is going to overpower it. If we continue doing the things the exact same way forever, nature's going to find a way around it. So we need to look at that and say, you know what, as we have used a lot of glyphosate over the last 10 or 15 years, now we've got the toughest weeds for glyphosate to kill are the only ones that are left. In fact, I talk to many farmers that say, man, cockleburr used to be my worst problem on my farm. Now I hardly ever see a cockleburr out there ever since I started using glyphosate. Wow, I guess glyphosate was great on it. But now I've got all these pig weeds that glyphosate isn't very good on, and pretty soon they're gonna be the weed that takes over my farm. So you need to keep that in mind and keep varying your practices, whether it's in your tillage, in the herbicides you're using, in the crops you're planting. Diversity is the only thing that'll stop resistant weeds. Okay, so specifically today, we really wanted to focus on this glyphosate problem because even where we farm in the state of South Dakota, they have now found common ragweed that's resistant to Roundup. They found mare's tail, they have found kochia. We're very concerned that lamb's quarters and water hemp are gonna be next, while buckwheat has been difficult to control for many years. So we've got a number of these different Roundup resistant weeds that are popping up in our state, how about in other parts of the country? Well, I recently had a chance to spend some time in southern Arkansas, and if you're from that part of the country, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They don't talk about weed control anymore in southern Arkansas. They only talk about pigweed control because the pigweed is now glyphosate resistant and ALS resistant, which were really their two favorite classes of chemistry, and the pigweeds are getting so thick they've estimated the population at over 350,000 pigweeds per acre. That's huge. That's way more than any population of uh, soybeans or corn that we're trying to plant out there. So they're just overpowering the crops that guys are planting in southern Arkansas. And in some cases this year, farmers were forced to actually till up their field and start over from scratch. So here's the thing. If you've got Roundup resistant weeds, you're gonna need to start with a good pre-emerge herbicide. I don't care what crop you're in. And in the southern U.S., some of those farmers are even starting with two pre-emerge herbicides. Then you're gonna need to follow with one of the old conventional herbicides in corn, soybeans, wheat, whatever crop you've got. You just have to mix it up and use something other than Roundup. There are still ways to control just about any weed out there, though. And speaking of weeds, the one on our minds today is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to get it under control coming up next.